Hi, I'm Richard Randall, and welcome to Your Real Estate Voice with Barb Schlinker, host of the program and owner of Your Home Sold Guaranteed Realty. This is the weekly radio show that informs and it educates you on how to buy or sell real estate with Colorado's real estate authority, Barb Schlinker. Barb Schlinker is a retired Navy veteran. Barb is an author. Barb Schlinker is also a pilot. And Barb and her team enjoy all that Colorado and the Front Range have to offer. Barb, always great to be talking with you. Now, we air your real estate voice every Saturday right after Cudlow. If you can't listen to the entire show, it is always available on Barb's site, barbhasthebuyers.com, or on podcast platforms. Just search for Barb on iHeartRadio, most of the other platforms as well. So Barb, what are we going to be talking about this weekend? Well, Richard, um, I get this question an awful lot, which is when is the best time of year to sell a house? And actually it doesn't matter. You know, it the best time is the best time for you. Uh, people think that there's a selling season and a not selling season, but uh, some of my busiest months have been in the winter. So you never know. So we're going to deep dive on that topic. And then we're going to bring up again about this whole uh, commission settlement with the National Association of Realtors and what will that mean to consumers going forward. I think it's important because it gives uh, home sellers and buyers an opportunity to uh, negotiate for their cost, their commission cost. And then the third topic is um, (laughs) how much will agents stretch the truth to get you to sign on the dotted line? Now, I know that sounds very aggressive, but uh, just from my own experiences, I can tell you it happens. So so I'm just going to give you some tips on how you can kind of plan for that and just think through it and try to be objective when you select somebody to handle one of your largest assets. And then the last topic is something everybody asks when they're getting ready to go on the market. What are the steps to downsize and declutter and get ready to sell before selling a house? And as always, I love covering my hot new listings. Richard? So, Barb, now that the summer real estate season has peaked and you've been reporting prices varying according to different locations along the front range, do you think that the real estate market will bounce back with changes in it? And if it does, when is the best time to sell your home right here in Colorado? There are certain times of the year when you'll see more volume of sales and like we have right now, more competition. So it really needs to be the best time of year should be the best time of year for you. Um, Now is a good time only because the rates have dropped about a half a percent. Anytime the interest rates drop, it means the buyers can afford more. Um, So you just want to make the schedule work for you. If you're planning on selling during the winter, one of the tips that I suggest people do, and they are thinking of uh, interviewing us, we offer a free service. Well, where we will take um, no cost, no obligation, outside photos, really high quality outside photos of your home while your home uh, is looking its best. Everybody's yard looks the prettiest in the summer. Everything's green. The flowers are blooming. So we do that just to get ahead of um, if they plan to sell in the wintertime. You know, the yards around here go very dormant. They don't look as nice. And um, it makes you stand out up against the competition. Um, But, you know, we're seeing homes selling every single month. You just have to make it work for you. But interest rates absolutely have an impact on it, Um, especially for the first time home buyers. Now, looking back a year when I tried to figure out, I actually looked at it and said, okay, if the rates went down, were there more sales or not? And I would say, yes, overall, that was true. Like back at the end of 2022, when the Fed zoomed up the rates into the mid sevens, Um, It really did put the gas on this red hot market. And so the anticipation was, okay, the prices are going to go down, but they didn't go down. The next spring, the rates dropped down into the sixes again, low sixes actually, and prices went up to everybody's surprise. And I think a lot of that has to do with just pure supply and demand. Now, the problem with the higher rates is for buyers, it's harder for buyers to afford the payment. Plus, one thing I just learned yesterday is um, there's a lot of pressure on the rental market. I don't know if you know this, Richard, but we are going to cover it in our next show. But um, 
the state legislators up in uh, Denver or wherever they meet just put all these new laws on rental properties. And some of them are very uh, anti-landlord and pro-tenant. So I had somebody call me yesterday and he goes, yeah, we're uh, in the process of evicting our tenant. But he said, there's new laws and we don't have to leave. And I'm like, oh boy, here we go. And then he talked to a lawyer and they're like, oh yeah, two to 5,000 to get them out. And even then you're just hoping the judge will make you kick them out. <laughs> that's the kind of stuff that's going on right now. So we're seeing a big surge of inventory of rental homes going on the market for that reason. Did you know that? I did not. I mean, it doesn't surprise me that uh, obviously some legislators are going to look out for renters and there's a place for that. There have been, you know, uh, landlords who have been abusive in terms of retaining security, et cetera. But things have changed where you have all of these squatters and you have so many of these issues, $5,000 to get someone out of your home. No wonder people are thinking twice about rental property. Yeah. And, and the net result for consumers, for tenants um, is going to be that the cost of getting into housing as a tenant is going to be a lot higher because there's fewer of them. And so that's a mistake. I think it's a huge mistake for them to do that. It's okay to be fair landlord to tenant. There's nothing wrong with that. But to put in these tenants' minds that I don't have to leave and there's nothing you can do is not good. At so, all. Um, we're going to, I can't wait to cover that topic. I just want to study it a little bit more and, and get some of the detail on the laws. Um, but in general, in, interest rates mean if the, if the interest rates are higher, it means that fewer people can afford to buy homes, right? And that the result is a lower amount of sales. So I pulled a graph that goes back to January of 2022, when the rates were around 3%, they went up to, you know, four-ish, um, and towards the end of 22, they jumped up. And then what we saw the following year is the rates dropped back down again, then the prices went up. So we see it go up and down, up and down. Anytime it goes up into the mid to upper sevens, that creates all kinds of demand destruction. Um, buyers can't afford the payments anymore. So either they're going to ask for the seller to pay some of their loan closing costs to buy down their interest rates, or they're just going to sit on the sidelines. I just had a buyer go under contract uh, under one of my listings right now. And I was very impressed. They lived with their parents and saved the two of them, their siblings, $120,000 to put down to buy their new house. Isn't that cool? That I was, is so cool. Yeah. So I was pretty impressed with that. And that's what buyers are going to have to do. And, you know, it's, it's brilliant to do that because if you, if you zoom out and look at house values over time, with very few exceptions, they don't drop that much over the long term, they go up. So real estate is a good investment. But the problem is when rates go up, there's more, there's fewer buyers. So we're seeing inventory go up rather substantially right now. Um, as compared to a year ago, a year ago, there were 2000 available homes on the market in the Pikes Peak region. Right now it's 20, almost 3000. That's a big jump in just one year for the same month. So that means home sellers have to compete for fewer buyers. We've had less sales than a year ago as well. So the thought is, well, something's got to give. Prices are going to go down. But the problem is we just haven't seen that. <laughs> so um, it could happen, possibly, but there is a little bit of supply and demand as far as the cost of interest rates that happen. When, when we saw the rates go up into the uh, mid sevens. Fewer buyers made loan applications and without the Fed doing anything, guess what? The interest rates came down so the mortgage market could sell loans. So there is some supply and demand in that, but the chances of us seeing 3% mortgage rates in the future are probably pretty low. I think the government, there was a government subsidy to keep those rates that low. And I don't think that will happen again, but I do think it's possible for them to go down into the fives. And, you know, no matter what, Real estate is very local. Buyers are always looking for the best home they can get in their price range. So homes that are priced initially, what I call very realistically or correctly, are going to get a contract in the first 30 days. And they tend to sell for the most money. So it's really important making that decision about pricing and who is going to help you sell that home. 
My name is Barb Schlinker. I'm the broker owner of Your Home Sold Guaranteed Realty and the host of this show. And we're, uh, we're, it's called The Real Estate Voice. And what we're talking about is when is the best time of year to sell a house? Do we do it now? Do we wait? Um, and when we come back, we're going to kind of cover that NAR settlement and really talk about how it will impact the closing costs for sellers. Richard? Barb, we're discussing the when is the best time to sell a house in Colorado. So what are the pricing trends right now? And what do you expect to happen through the remainder of the summer? Well, real estate's very local. Um, it's unique to a neighborhood. It's unique to a house. Um, and there are some homes that seem like they're priced right that are just not selling. I get those requests on a weekly basis. Hey, I'm listed with so-and-so a friend of mine forever, and the pictures are bad and nothing's happening and we don't know what to do. You know, I, I get that a lot. And, but I have, most of my listings are moving pretty quick. Now, some of them, if the sellers are being stubborn about price, they're sitting there on the market. So it's all about price and positioning the home to be the best available home on the market. So what we're looking at right now uh, in, in the county, and this is probably true across the board, all along the front range, that we're seeing uh, inventory rise, the number of available homes go up. Now, some of that is seasonal. Um, when in the summer is when most people want to move, you know, in between uh, school, uh, registering the kids for school and all that kind of thing. So I don't think it's any big deal, but what we're seeing across the board in all the different counties are rising inventory, prices are in general flattening to some point, and um, not as many homes are selling. So what do you do about it? You got to make sure you hire the right person that knows how to give you good advice about how to position the home to get the most money. Any home that's what's considered to be a good deal with the buyer is going to move really fast. It's also important to hire a great agent. You want somebody that knows the local market somebody that knows how you position the home against competition, and most of all, somebody that knows how uh, to negotiate. Now, we do that for home sellers week in and week out. Uh, if you're not ready to sell now, you just want to get kind of a quick idea of what your home is worth, go to barbhasthebuyers.com, click on the button that says get home value, and we will actually look up similar sales. It's not, it's not a computer doing it. It's not Zestimate or Realtor.com or any of these algorithm things. It's somebody looking at your house, looking at the floor plan, looking at similar sales, the ones that are selling now, the ones that have sold recently, to give you a really good idea of what range your home will sell for. It's a free service and you're never obligated to sell a home. If you are thinking of moving uh, in the next three to six months and you'd like to get a free in-home consultation on what to do and what not to do, Give us a call at 719-301-3900 or go to barbhasthebuyers.com. When we meet, we not only look at your home and give you tips on what to do and what not to do, but we also give you a really good idea of what your home will sell for, um, show you how much you're going to put in your pocket when it sells. And also we show up with cash offers. Nobody else does that. We're not talking about one low ball cash offer. We're talking about multiple offers that could work for you. You're listening to Your Real Estate Voice with Barb Schlinker of Your Home Sold Guaranteed Realty. She's the host of the program. And if you are thinking of making a move, call Barb at 719-301-3900 or visit barbhasthebuyers.com. We'll take a short break. When we come back, we're going to be talking about will the NAR commission settlement mean lower commissions? Barb will explain that to you when we come back. 